So Luke Ronke joins us. Uh, thank you very much always for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. And welcome back to the program. Sweet. Thanks for having me. Look, three one-dayers against India, then three T20s. Before we even get on to that, just a fantastic series and comeback against Pakistan. Um, I know that you've got to park that, you've got another series, but just talk to us about that achievement. Uh, it was fantastic. I think that sometimes, yeah, I guess because we left so quickly after that series, it, sort of, it gets a bit sort of pushed aside or glossed over, but but what the guys did over there was, was a fantastic achievement to, to win a a series in the subcontinent for the first time in, in a long time and, and to sort of play our, our first series in Pakistan a long time as well was um, was awesome and the whole tour was, was fantastic and to, to finish it off with that win was, I guess you can't sort of, you can't finish it off any better. Yeah, Luke, to come back from one in a three-match series, any series is bloody hard anyway, but to win it like you know we did on that last one, uh, Glenn Phillips, incredible innings from him as well. It just must give the team so much confidence going into this Indian series. Uh, exactly. That's that's sort of the messaging that's been given to the guys on this tour is to not to forget how, how well they played over there. Uh, there are certain aspects we can still be better at, which is always a, a good thing as well. So you sort of use those those memories and the and the I guess the thoughts that the guys have got from that series and bring it into this one and it'll be a different challenge again over here against Indy obviously but it's an exciting one for the guys and this sort of hopefully we can put some decent performances up again as well. Yeah, okay, so just ex- explain the subtle differences. For those of us who haven't ha- haven't been there to that part of the world, uh, before we get into the two teams and their different playing styles and players and things, just in terms of the conditions in that, is it? I mean, it might be a dumb question, mate, I'm sorry if it is, but is it radically different between Pakistan and India? Um, it, well, it can be. I think the surfaces are, I mean, the surfaces can be completely different. I think Pakistan, the there was a lot more turn in those white ball games than expected um, to start with. And then the test matches, the surface were quite sort of flat. Where coming to India, we're sort of expecting um, for white ball games here, the surfaces are normally very sort of batter friendly. Um, so then I guess they've got a bit more pace in them and, and bounce. So that's what we found at training last night in the, in the net. So uh, the guys will sort of come about the games and, and be ready for those sort of things. That's not going to be too surprising with, I guess different conditions coming at us, um, but again, it's still it's exciting as well because you, you get some really big crowds in India as well compared to certain parts of the world. So that sort of adds to the atmosphere as well, which is always exciting. Now I'm just going. I've got so many questions to ask you after that. I want to talk about that atmosphere absolutely, but pace and bounce. We're talking about India here. Pace and bounce has that really changed? I mean, what I mean, what are they doing to their pitches? They used to be pudding when you went over there. <laughs> well, I think you get. You get different surfaces for red ball cricket and white ball cricket over here. Uh, mm. There's a lot more sort of high scoring, free flowing games in white ball cricket. Um, I guess over the years things have changed a little bit, but also um, I think that the excitement you get of playing sort of ODIs and T20s in India is is quite high, uh, and that's what they want. I think they want to make it a spectacle, which it always is, and then I think that's how you get sort of the most out of it—a bit more pace and bounce in surfaces. Not all of them. There's obviously there's different ones around the country at different times, but um, we expect this one here uh, to be a nice sort of flat belter of a sort of track, so um, that's the way we're going to sort of prepare. Luke Ronke is with us, the first of three one-dayers tonight in Hyderabad. This is New Zealand, of course, black caps, and then we've got three uh, T20s after that. Uh, playing in Karachi, one thing that was really confusing watching was that I just, every time I, you know me, any of my mates turned on, I was like, where the, where the hell's the crowd gone? Why why weren't people turning up for that? What, is, <laughs> what, what was there was it was there restrictions on the crowd? No, not that I know of. I, the last the last thirty, I had a, a really good crowd. Okay, uh, I think it was also the time of the week for for them. Friday is the sort of the start of their weekend, so then there's a lot more people coming out to watch, which was was a fantastic way to finish that series as well. It would have been nice to have a few more during those test matches. The 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 final day of the second test, there's a few more people came, came in to sort of see a result at the end, which was, mm. was awesome. Uh, but as the week went along, the crowd got bigger and bigger, so it was always nice to finish on a on a high with a bit more buzz and noise around and atmosphere, so it's always nice to play in front of a, a decent-sized crowd. And look, I'll tell you what was just fantastic, mate, was seeing our team playing in Pakistan, actually, you know, at Pakistani venues against... You know, I mean, that was just... I mean, it's been so long. It's been a couple of decades. I mean, they, I mean, you know, I, I don't think we can gloss over that, can we? No. I think that's a... 
it's an, an amazing place to play cricket. I've been there a few times playing in their their local leagues with the PSL, and the, the I guess the the welcoming nature of of Pakistanis and and being able to play cricket over there, it's just it's awesome. And for the guys to come out and, and play the way they did and and contest every game the way they did was was brilliant to watch. And the Pakistani players themselves were awesome as well with. Um, how good they were with us as well, when we weren't playing the games and then in games and those sorts of things. So it was a it was a brilliant tour to be on. Yeah, fan- look, a fantastic series. And look, I was actually, I mean, I went back and had a look back through the record books of when we'd toured Pakistan. And, and this is crazy, mate. I don't know whether you know this, but you probably do, do because you're, I know you love your cricket and you love your history and that. When we toured in 1969 and we won a series there, we played one match which in a at a venue which is now Bangladesh, because Pakistan was split. It was West Pakistan and East Pakistan. Can you get your head around that? Crazy, eh? Yeah, I know. It's amazing, that sort of stuff. That's, that's the cool thing as well, like the history of the game and, and the countries and how it works around that sort of part of the world. So I think when you look back at that, I think it's always a cool thing to say that you've been there, you've played there, and and you've competed there, and you've also you go back and say you actually won a series there as well. So I mean, it's all... All those things, I think, add to the, the great history of the game. Luke, do you honestly believe Luke Ronchi is with us, Black Caps versus India tonight? Do you, do you believe that the way we played the tests and the momentum we got from that, uh, we were so consistent both with bat and ball, that carried over into the one days? I, again, sorry if it's a dumb question, and I know they're two completely different forms of cricket, but it just kind of felt like we were on a roll. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, again, I think that's not definitely not a dumb question because that's the way the guys have always wanted to sort of play their cricket this team has, has worked it well where we we try and stay consistent in our in our prep and the way we want to play our games we obviously adapt to, to surfaces and conditions and things very well but you want to continue on it is still the same thing it's a cricket ball coming down at you so it doesn't matter if it's red or white you sort of you change your sort of mindset a little bit for different formats uh, but we need to play sort of stay as consistent as possible when you're you play in different parts of the world, and, and the guys are doing a fantastic job of that. And even when we have sort of newer guys come into the group, they they mould straight into that style of play as well. And, and I think that's an amazing thing for for the whole of New Zealand cricket domestically and our sort of high performance and all those sorts of things. It's it's all moving in in the same direction together. So I think that's that's something that you look look back at and look at it. I guess in the, the present as well. It's a, a fantastic place to be in for for New Zealand cricket. How much of these series is about the sheer pragmatism of winning the series and how much of it is looking forward, obviously, to the One Day World Cup coming up um, at the end end of the year, October, November, and and developing players, trying out different things for that tournament? Yeah, I think the second part of that is is definitely more so of a thing. Um, I think we never go into... You always want to win, obviously. That's the, the way the game works. But if you're going into it thinking, no, we have to win this series, then more often than not, you put you put added pressures or added expectations on something that, that doesn't need to be there. Uh, and then so you realise as well that there are bigger fish to fry as you're going along. It's sort of you have these series at different times and, and different guys get opportunities, which is which is fantastic. And, and those guys obviously want to be involved more and more. So to see these guys come out and, and show their skills and enjoy playing international cricket is a is a great thing to see. But then you also realise that there is a World Cup at the end of this year, and and you want to be able to play games in this part of the world and get used to conditions and and understand game styles and and what might be needed later on in the year. So there's there are certainly two ways to look at it. But if you go into a series thinking that oh, we have to win, then I think you're going to be a world of bother anyway. I reckon that I can I can, I can I can I can punt this one and I reckon I'm going to be right. I reckon that this series, the T20 and the one days against India, are not going to be affected by the weather like they were in New Zealand. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd expect so. <laughs> oh, look! I'll, I'll actually give you the lotto numbers next. But I mean, you know, that's one thing. It's one thing about India, isn't it? And and also that part of the world, the consistency. Uh, yeah, it is. It is, and it's. I mean, it's still going to be um, cooler than usual. I think the first game is still going to be fairly warm for the guys, but I guess this time of year in this part of the world, it's, it is a, a lot cooler in the evenings and things like that. But yeah, if there's if there's rain come around, then I'll be giving you a call straight back. And <laughs> what to get up to. 
they're an imperious form. That's the other thing. I mean, watching, uh, you know, and reading uh, the the bits and pieces from Sri Lanka. I mean, you know, breaking our, our record for the you know the biggest number of runs and a defeat and things. And and Coley just basically hitting almost two off every ball. Any special plans for him, or can't you plan for a guy like that? No, again, we there's always plans for people. I mean, there's no one's perfect. Obviously, playing the a fantastic brand of cricket at the moment and playing it really well. So it's going to be tough and we all understand that, but we also know if we actually do our stuff as well as we possibly can, then you're always going to, it's always going to be great contests. So um, that's one of the things that guys sort of trust themselves. They trust each other. And, and that's all you can ask going into a series is, is, is that and sort of put your best foot forward and, and see what happens. I think um, you can always bowl your best ball or, or bat your best, but, there's always an opposition who can do the same thing. So um, as long as we're going in there with with the right mindsets that we need and the right attitudes that we need, then we're going to go out there and play as well as we can as a group. And then we'll see what happens at the end of the game. A couple of quick questions. We'll let you go. And I thank you so much for your time, Luke. It's been fantastic, mate. All right. So um, the difference with Kane coming back to be the white ball captain after Tim captained uh, the red ball during the test series, we know now that Kane's actually in charge of the white ball. So how does that change, if it changes at all? Um, oh, it, it does change because they're two different people. I mean, there's still two sort of different captaincy styles and the way they want to go about it, but they've also played a lot of cricket together. So no matter what, their leader's on the field anyway, so they're always talking and, and working through things together. Um, but that's always the way, the, that's the nature of, of this team as well. You can be the captain, but you're still, you've got other people around you to help you out. So they have their styles and, and the guys know Kane and the way he works. And now they sort of know Timmy as well, even though he's a new captain. So it's, it works well. The guys are, are, are sweet with it. And the cricket we've been playing, even though it's only been sort of one series, has been really good. So we've got to see Tom Latham looking after the group for these ODIs. And he's done that before as well. So the, the guys sort of know what to expect from, from the different captains. OK, and these, these count for points towards the One Day World Cup. Is that relevant or not? Uh, I'm pretty sure we've already yeah, we're qualified, qualified know, yeah. for that anyway. So, so in all reality, that doesn't mean too, too much. But okay. it's, again, like we said earlier, it's, it's making sure we're prepping for that World Cup and and knowing how we want to go about it and the guys going out and and showing their skills and trusting their skills and seeing how we go from there. Awesome, mate. Thank you so much again for your time. Great talking to you. Not a problem. Thanks for having me.